This video was sponsored by ButcherBox. Oh, hey. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this set of stairs right here. They're rock solid and they're much easier to build than you would think. So follow along, watch the video, check the video description for links to tools and supplies and all that stuff. There's also a link down there to our website where we've got a bunch of sweet merchandise, hats, t-shirts, motivational posters, stickers, downloadable digital plans. I mean, all sorts of stuff. So check that out. But for now, stairs, we're gonna build them. All right, people, the first thing I needed to do was, well, unfortunately, pour some more concrete. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't pour this concrete when I poured the rest of the footings for the treeless treehouse. Well, that's because I forgot I needed a landing for my staircase. It's also because I wasn't originally gonna build a staircase. I was gonna build a ladder because this is supposed to be like a treehouse. But then I realized if we only had a ladder, we'd have to carry all the lumber for the second story up a ladder. So I decided to go staircase to make it easier on myself. Totally disregarding my son's wishes. Nah, I'm just kidding. He's super excited to have a staircase. But in order to have a staircase, we need to have a solid landing, which means more concrete. So before I did anything else, I needed to build a form for said concrete. I had a bunch of this pressure treated Douglas fir scrap laying around so I decided just to use these 2x10s. So I screwed four of them together to make a nice 40x40 40 40 inch square. With my form constructed I next needed to determine the height that I wanted the top of my landing to, well, land at. So I just measured down to the top of the footing, that seemed like a good place and I tied a string onto the footing and stretched it out to about where I wanted my landing to start. This is gonna help me make sure that I get the top of the landing perfectly level with the top of the footing. We tied a string on, Craig leveled it out, and we plopped our form into this hole that I dug. Next, we're gonna have to raise this landing form up so that it's perfectly level with that footing. I also measured from the edge of our tower to make sure that it was perfectly parallel to our tower. That'll help us align our stairs when we get to constructing them. Then I hammered in a bunch of wooden stakes and using some of these Rockler squeeze clamps, I just clamped the form to the stakes until everything was nice and level and I nailed the stakes to the form to keep it elevated. Once we had enough stakes in the ground to hold the form at the right height and made sure that it was nice and level, well actually it's only level left to right. I gave it a little bit of slope off the back so that when water lands it'll have some place to run. But you just want to make sure that it's level left to right so your stairs aren't cattywankus. And with the easy part done, it was time to move on to the hard part, which was unfortunately the concrete work. Now the reason I should have done this when I did my footings is because for my footings I just called a cement truck and it poured all the concrete and mixed it for me. But I wasn't about to order another cement truck for a little landing. This one we're going to do the old fashioned way. Manual labor. So we filled up the bottom of the form with gravel and packed it down and I made a little rebar structure to give the concrete some strength. Then we started mixing 80 pound bags of 5,000 PSI concrete. And the foreman pointed out the few spots we missed. Yeah, I know buddy, we're not done yet. Just hold your horses. But in no time we were done mixing all the concrete and our form was filled up very nicely. So I grabbed a scrap piece of our decking material and I used it to screed off the top and get it nice and level. Now because this is going to be a landing, meaning you're going to walk on it, I used a push broom and I brushed the top to give it a little texture so you wouldn't slip and slide all over the place. And then I used this little edging tool to give it a nice rounded over edge so that it wouldn't chip off and break and it would look kind of like a miniature sidewalk. And then to top it all off, of course, each member of our family had to put a handprint in it because what's wet concrete if you don't put your handprint in it? Does it even really exist? So I put mine in, the foreman put his in the middle, and then my wife put hers on the outside. Ah, 
family memories. As you can see, the back of the form drops off just a little bit to give it some slope, and the front of the form is perfectly level with the top of our footing. This will make doing the math for our stairs much easier because we know the height of everything. Next, we gotta figure out, well, all the math for our stairs, which is not my favorite part. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can take the total height of your structure, for ours it's 106.375, and divide it by 7.5, which is a good rise height for each step. That gave us 14.183. So you can play around with this a little bit and try and find a good way to divide out the height so you get a good number, making sure that your rise stays between six and eight inches or else it's gonna get funky. Or you can get on this website, mycarpentry.com, and they have a stair calculator. So you just enter in your height, you enter in your desired rise, so we put seven and a half. You enter in your desired run or your tread width, so I put in ten and a half, and you press calculate. It's going to tell you how many steps you'll get. It's going to tell you the height that each step needs to be, and it's even going to give you a little diagram to show exactly how you need to cut all your parts and pieces. This by far is the easiest way to figure out how to cut your stringers, which we're going to do now. Now to lay out your stringers, you can do it in a couple different ways. A common way is just to use a square like this. You figure out your rise, you get that number right here, and you figure out your run, you put that number over there, and then you just trace it out. That gives you a step shape. Then all you have to do is take that square and you move it on down. You line it up with that same rise on the corner of your run. You figure out your run dimension on the bottom and you trace that out again. But I don't think this is the most accurate way to do this because your square can move around a little bit each time and you don't know if you're getting it perfect. Now they do make these little nuts that screw onto a square for this purpose and they act as little stops. So you get the dimensions locked right in and then you just set it on the side and you can work your way all the way down. But I don't have any of those nuts. So I'm gonna show you another quick way to do it and that's just to make a stringer jig. Basically, you're just gonna need a piece of wood that's as wide or a little bit wider than the rise of your stairs. Now our rise is right around seven and a half inches. So I'm gonna mark up on the edge of this board, seven and a half inches right there. That's my rise. And then I'm gonna mark my run, which for these stairs is gonna be 10 and a half inches. We're gonna have a half inch overhang on our actual treads, which will bring the stairs out to 11 inches. So I mark over 10 and a half inches right there. Then I connect those two dots and I make this cool triangle shape. Ooh, ah. And then just so I don't get things confused, I like to just label it my rise on this side and then I'll write run down here so I know exactly what is what. Next, I'm gonna take that piece of wood and I'm gonna cut right along that line so I'm left with this cool little triangle piece. Once I get that cut off and it falls nicely on the ground, all you gotta do is pick it up and then you're just gonna screw it to a nice piece of scrap wood like this. This is gonna be your stop. So we'll just add a couple wood screws right through the back of the piece of plywood, one on the top and one on the bottom, and this is gonna lock everything together nice and secure. You don't have to worry about the two boards being square to one another, that doesn't really matter. You just need a stop piece on the back, and it looks like that. Then using our handy dandy jig, we're gonna start at the top of the board and mark our first step using our run measurement of 10 and a half inches. Then we're just gonna slide the jig down until our rise side is right on the line of our run, and we're gonna just trace out that shape. That gives us step number two. Then we're gonna move down and, you know, do the exact same thing over again. That's gonna give us our third step and so on and so forth. At the top, we're gonna flip our jig around on the other side, right on the edge of our run, and using our rise, we're gonna draw a line. That gives us the angle for the top of our stringer to land. And then we're just gonna keep working our way down our two by 12, marking out all of our stairs until we get to the bottom. 
and we know how many stairs we need because of that handy dandy stair calculator. At the bottom we're going to do the same thing we did on the top, flip the jig around on the other side and we're going to draw a line. That'll give us an angle for the bottom of our stringer to land on the landing. But at the bottom we have to do one more thing. We have to measure up from that bottom line the thickness of our stair treads and we want to cut along that line to make that bottom step just that much shorter. That way, when we add our treads to each reoccurring step, the height or rise will be correct. So after marking up 7 eighths of an inch, because that is going to be the thickness of our decking, I put the square across all those marks and I draw a nice straight line. This is our new cut line for that bottom portion. Now that we have our stringers all traced out, it's as simple as just cutting along our pencil line. For this, I like to just use a skill saw. Now, you're not going to get a perfectly straight vertical cut at the end of your cut with a skill saw because the blade is round. So you're just going to go all the way to the edge with the top of your cut, and then we'll come back and finish it off by hand with a pole saw. So you just go. You cut along your line on your rise, you cut along your line on your run, making sure to stay on the inside of your line, not the outside, because that would shrink down your rise and run by the width of your blade. Anyways, back and forth, and back and forth. At some point, my ears are starting to hurt, so Craig brought me my pair of isotunes free. Ah, yes, sweet audio relief. That's better. And I got back to work, finishing all my cuts. Rise, run, rise, run, run, rise. And pretty soon I had all my initial cuts done. Then I just took my Japanese flush cut pole saw, slid it into the crack, and a zip, 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 zap, 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 zoop, zoop, zoop. I finished the cuts on each one of my stair little cutout thingamawatsits my my rises and my run thingies and now for the moment of truth if we did our math correctly this should sit on our landing and also hit the top of our tower with each step being very nice and level and we're able to just whoopsie daisy um i guess i forgot that uh oh yeah <laughs> we gotta build more and then add the steps i always forget that part you guys like meat? I like meat. But only if I know the meat that I'm eating comes from a reliable, good quality source, which is why I'm so happy to say that this video is sponsored by our friends at ButcherBox, where you can get meat delivered right to your door, and you know it's good quality. I'm talking about 100% grass-fed, pasture-raised beef, USDA certified organic free range chicken, wild caught seafood, you got salmon, haddock, cod, scallops, humanely raised and treated pork. We just got a box, we got some awesome stuff. We got our bacon in here, we got scallops, we got steak, we got pork chops, we got Italian sausage, we got breakfast sausage. The options are endless. I'm gonna show you their website, show you how easy it is to get on there and order a box your very own, and you can have it delivered whenever you want. ButcherBox sources from farmers and fishermen who meet only the highest standards for quality. It's insanely easy to sign up. You choose your box and delivery frequency. And to keep things simple, ButcherBox offers five boxes, four curated box options, as well as the popular custom box. So you get exactly what you and your family love. To get started, all you need to do is click the link in my description box to sign up today and get two pounds of ground beef, up to three pounds of chicken breast, and one pack of bacon for free in your first box. Right now, they're giving new members a custom bundle with five plus pounds of high quality meat for free. The perfect starter for all kinds of delicious meals for your whole 30, busy weeknights, dinner parties, morning meals, and more. So check out ButcherBox and feel good about your next meal. So with one stringer cut out and tested to make sure it was the right size, we can now use that stringer as our template to trace out our remaining two stringers. We're going to do three stringers in total because the width of our stairs is only going to be 36 inches wide. If you went up to like 48 or 50 or 60 inches wide, obviously you're probably going to want more stringers so that they're each at least 16 on center. But we only needed three. So we started chopping them down, blowing some dust, and, well, chopping them 
down some more. Really, this is a very repetitive process. Skill saw, pull saw, zip zap soup. I think you get the whole picture. And in no time, we had another stringer. And because we used our first stringer as the template for our second stringer, we know this one's going to be exactly the same size and shape as the first one. So we set it up there, and things are looking pretty good. So with our third and final stringer cut out, it was time to start thinking about installing these. Now they make little metal brackets, kind of like joist hangers that you can hook onto the stringer. I don't really love those because in my opinion they're a little wobbly. So instead of hanging these off the bottom of our top board, we're just going to add another board below so that the entire top of the stringer has a firm place to land and then we can anchor it in from the back of those boards nice and snug and we don't have to use any of those metal brackets. Not that there's anything wrong with the metal brackets, it's just the stairs that I've done in the past with those metal brackets, they just seem to have a little more wobble than when you can get the top of the stringer set firmly on a nice solid piece of wood. So a little two by six later and we got a nice solid area to land all three of our stringers. So we set all three stringers roughly in place where we wanted them and next we needed to make sure that our stringers were going to be perfectly square to our tower. So we took another piece of string, <laughs> a piece of string to align our stringers. That's funny. And running it from the back of the tower, we ran it all the way past our stringers and measured over from the string to the edge of the stringer. Then we just had to measure over from the edge of our tower to our stringer that same distance, and now we knew that the stringer was perfectly square on the top and the bottom. Then before we start hooking these things to our tower, I wanted to cut two more pieces. Now these are gonna be our side little brace pieces. Well, they're not really braces, they're more aesthetically pleasing. You don't need these when you're building stairs, but I like to put these little side rails on because it just looks a lot nicer and neater. Basically, this whole piece is going to go on the side of both of our outside stringers, and it's going to cover up the edge of all of our deck boards. So you just get a nice, smooth look of your stairs, top to bottom, without seeing those exposed, you know, cut edges of your treads. It'll all make sense later. Don't worry about it. The other thing we need to do is prepare our middle stringer to be anchored down to the bottom of our landing. So on the very front of our middle stringer, we're going to notch out a little section so that it can sit over this pressure treated 2x4 that we're going to bolt down to the landing itself. Some people notch out the outside too, but I don't bother with that. I just screw the outside to the 2x4 because it's a lot easier. And if you're not putting that decorative piece on the outside, it looks a lot cleaner too. So we're just going to notch out the middle one. So using a little scrap piece of said 2x4, I trace it out on the bottom of that middle stringer. And then I cut it out the same way I cut each individual step. Just with a skill saw and finishing it up with the pole saw. That gives us a nice little cutout to sit over that pressure treated 2x4. And if none of this makes any sense, don't worry. It'll all come together in the end. Next, we just had to get our first stringer in the exact right position, meaning that all the steps are level. Once we had our first stringer in the correct position and all leveled out, Craig held it and I screwed it in from the back with two structural screws. Now our first stringer is anchored in place. Next, it's time to figure out our other two remaining stringers. But first, we want to make sure they're all in the correct position and spaced out evenly. So I measured the width between our first stringer and our other outside stringer, and I cut a 2x4 to that length to slide perfectly in between them. Keep in mind, that far outside stringer is not installed yet, it's just sitting there. Once I wedge this 2x4 in between, I screw it in from the outside at the base so it's going through the bottom of my stringer and directly into that 2x4. I do this on one side and then I go over and do the same thing on the other side. This permanently sets the width of our two outside stringers. Then we have to match that width on the top. So I take that same width that I did on the bottom, I subtract an inch and a half because that's the width of our middle stringer, and then I cut that piece directly in half. 
Now I should have two pieces that I can use as spacer blocks, one on the left and one on the right, to perfectly center our middle stringer and set the width of our stringers at the top of our staircase. Have I said stringers enough yet in this video? Holy cow, how many times can I say the same stinking word? Now, with our other piece, before we hook it to the top, we're gonna use that as a spacer block on the bottom and slide our middle stringer all the way over to get it perfectly centered. And if we did our math right, when we take out the spacer block on one side, we should be able to move it over to the other side and it should be the exact same distance. Just like that. Now that we know everything is aligned correctly and spaced out, I take that other spacer block and I stick it on the other side of my middle stringer at the top and I screw it in place. Now we can hook our last two stringers in from the back, again with two like six inch long structural screws. Those things aren't going anywhere. And then to keep that middle stringer in place at the bottom, I just toenail it in with a few screws from either side. This isn't structural at all, it's just to hold that middle stringer in place until we put our treads on. Next, it's time to put on our little decorative side pieces. I'm sure these have a proper name, but I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna call them little decorative side pieces. I just clamp them in place with a few of those rockler clamps and I just add a bunch of screws from the outside right into our stringer. Zip, zip, zap, zap, zoop, zoop. And once I have one side done, I fill my mouth up with a bunch more screws and I do the other side. As I mentioned, these pieces aren't necessary. The stairs would be plenty strong without them, but even though they are just decorative, they do add quite a bit of rigidity to the stairs and just make them that much stronger. So I get my other piece in place, clamped on, and a few more screws, and that one is ready to go. And this thing's starting to look like a flipping staircase. Then the last thing I need to do before I start installing my treads was actually anchor the bottom of the stairs to our concrete landing. So I drilled through the pressure treated wood first with a half inch drill bit and then I used the hammer drill drilling directly into the concrete. I'm just going to put two half inch wedge anchors, one on either side of that middle stringer and that should lock this base in place and keep these stairs from going anywhere. I mean, they're going to be like hurricane proof at this point. Too bad we don't live near the ocean because I'd like to see if these would withstand a hurricane. Anywho, with my wedge anchors hammered in place, I tighten them down with a nut washer and a little adjustable wrench because I couldn't find my socket set. And alas, we were ready to start adding our treads. Now for the treads, I'm gonna use the same vertical grain pine decking that I used for all the platforms. So I set up a little stop on my chop saw because every single tread is gonna be the exact same width and I just start cutting pieces down like there's no tomorrow. But in actuality, there is a tomorrow. I know that because I have a podiatrist appointment tomorrow. I can't forget, it's at 11 o'clock. Then with a bunch of pieces cut, I start slapping them in place. Now the first thing you're gonna wanna do is put a riser piece on the back of your stairs. You don't wanna put your treads down and set the risers on top because that will mess everything up. So riser first and then you can start laying in your treads. It works out perfectly that three of these pieces is the exact right depth to make one step with a half inch overhang once you put the riser on. So I just start putting these pieces in place and screwing them right into each one of my stringers on both sides and the middle. And I just cut a couple eighth inch little spacer pieces to space them all out. The foreman came over and started hand feeding me blackberries. So I had just enough energy to power through this thing and hopefully get these entire stairs knocked out in one day. I did have to stop and take a little break because the foreman found a stick and for some reason needed me to screw a deck screw into the end of it. I'm not sure what he wanted this for, but he promised me he had a plan. So I kindly obliged. 
And then it was back to business, laying out more risers and treads and screwing them on. Eventually, I made the foreman quit playing with his stick and get to work. Now I know what you're thinking, he needs safety glasses, but don't worry, I just told him to be a real woodworker and close your eyes when you make the cut. Duh. You all go back to cutting a piece, piece of wood using a kid. And I'm gonna cut this board. Just let's murder this board. Uh oh. If he can talk on camera like that, I'm going to be out of a job soon. Anyways, with the foreman slicing up boards and handing them to me, I just kept creeping my way up to the top of the stairs. You know this is the first time that I feel like the foreman was actually pulling his weight on the project, and it was nice that I didn't have to climb down and up the stairs every time I needed a new board. Pretty soon the whole family was out on the staircase rooting me on. Probably because they wanted me to hurry up and finish because... I was supposed to cook dinner. And in the last bits of twilight, the stairs were completely finished. Not bad for a one day build. As you can see, stairs, they're really not that complicated. So go build yourself some and finally get to that top shelf. Stairs. Hey, hope you enjoyed that video. Not too shabby. Now we can go up and down, down and up. Next week, we're building a bridge from here all the way over there. So you're gonna wanna stick around for that. Also check the link in the video description for links to products and tools and everything we used in the video. There's a link to our website with Switch merchandise. There's a Patreon link. Sorry, I'm winded from climbing so many stairs. Anyways, Patreon link, and you can get behind the scenes footage, and live question and answer, and a um, whole bunch of other whew, stuff. <sighs> oh, I gotta work out more.